So Google has announced it's offering support for the Linux kernel that's used inside Android for four years. Now in this video, I want to look about why that is important, what it means for the Linux kernel, a bit of details about how the Linux kernel is used inside of Android and so on. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So every operating system, whether it's Android or iOS or Windows or Mac OS or Linux itself, all receive security updates. That's because all software contains bugs. And uh, closed source software like Windows, like Mac OS contain bugs. Uh, iOS contains bugs. And Android and Linux also contain bugs. And the way those bugs are fixed and the way they are found is different in each operating system, but the reality is there are bugs. Now, some bugs are just annoying, something doesn't work the set way it should, but some bugs are dangerous because they can expose private and important information to hackers. So nowadays on our phones, we're, we're paying for things with our phones. We just tap our phones and pay these. We open up our banking applications on our phones. We buy things online uh, using our phones. And so there's lots of information, banking information, and personal information that are on our phones. And if they're exposed through a bug, then that needs to be squashed. That bug needs to be squashed. That ex vulnerability needs to be closed so that our data remains safe. Now, one of the ways that happens is by updating the Linux kernel in the case of Android and of course, Linux distributions themselves. And so there is work to update the Linux kernel and to ship that information out to Google and then to all its OEM partners so the phones can be updated. And we're used to the monthly security updates we get on our Android phones. That also happens on Windows, Mac OS as well for using a different scheme, but we get these monthly updates, including on Android, that close all the recently found uh, bugs and vulnerabilities. Now, Android uses the Linux kernel and it's very much dependent on the long-term support releases of the Linux kernel. Now, in 2017, the support for the Linux kernel was moved from two years to six years for its long-term support releases. And this was done in conjunction with Google because it allowed Google to offer security updates for six years for its devices. And more and more as people buy smartphones, they don't want to upgrade every year or every two years. They want to extend the lifetime of that phone over multiple years. And knowing you're going to get updates to the Linux kernel, to the security aspects of your operating system so you can use it safely over a period of several years is an important thing. And that was great. Unfortunately, in 2023, that was reduced from six years back down to two years because the, the load, the sheer amount of work to keep that going was too much for kernel.org, for the Linux Foundation, for all the people that are doing that Linux work. So it got shrunk again down to two years. So that's obviously a problem now for the Android ecosystem. So what Google is announcing is it itself is going to offer four years of support for these long-term support kernels that get used specifically inside of Android. Now, Android actually uses what's called the Android Common Kernels, and they are downstream versions of the mainstream Linux kernel. That means they're taken directly from there, and they include extra stuff like patches that would be of interest to the Android community that haven't yet been merged into the main line, but they're needed inside of the Android Common Kernel. So these patches include back ports and cherry picks of upstream functionality needed for certain Android features. Features ready for Android devices, but are not yet actually deemed as ready inside of the mainstream kernel. Of course, the difference is here, we're talking about a mobile handset rather than let's say some kind of server. So different environments, these features are deemed to be ready for Android, but they haven't yet been accepted higher up in the mainstream kernel. And also vendor OEM features that are useful for other ecosystem partners. So of course, Android is you know, its own ecosystem. And there are things that sometimes need to happen inside the Linux kernel to keep that ecosystem uh, going well. Now, normally these Android common kernel branches are created from the mainline uh, kernel branch when a new LTS release is declared upstream. For example, Android 15 dash 6.6 .6 was created shortly after version 6.6 .6 was declared 
from the LTS stream of the Linux kernel and the Android 15 references the uh, Android release that that kernel is associated with, of course, in this case, uh, Android 15. Now, beginning with kernel 6.6, .6, that is Android 15 6.6, .6, the support lifetime provided by Google, not provided by uh, the Linux mainstream or from the Linux foundation, but by Google is for four years. Now here's a chart of how we've been tracking the different uh, kernels over the last few years. Going back to 2020, we had kernel uh, 5.10, and then we've had different versions of Android, Android 12, Android 13, 14, 15, that have slowly gone up the different versions of the uh, Android kernel, depending on the long-term support release that was available. So we see there we've got 5.15, 6.1, and now 6.6. .6. Now the 6.6 .6 time frame was this, right back in December of 2023, 6.6 .6 was selected to be the new uh, long-term support kernel. It became feature complete in March of 2024. The uh, module interface was frozen in June 2024, at which point it became frozen in terms of the interfaces for Android, Android 15 6.6, .6, and that will get supported, as you can see there, right up until June 2028. In fact, we can look at all the different kernels here. Previously, they had these six years of support that came from you know, the Linux Foundation and from kernel.org. So you can see the different dates here, 2025 even still. We're being supported here for that kernel 4.19, Android 11, the kernel in there is still supported 2026, Android 12, 2026, Android another 12 there, 2027, Android 30, and so on. Now, the tricky thing is round about here, you can see that the version that's got the Android kernel 6.1, uh, so that's Android 14, is supported until 2029 with that six years. After that date, because it was in 2023 that, that the support window was changed, so now we've got this four years support, which actually brings us to 2028. So, funny enough, the 6.1 kernel is actually supported longer than the 6.6 .6 was. It's 2028, 2029, and then 2028 again. Now, the important thing here is that Android 15 devices are only allowed to launch, and the keyword here is launch, so new phones that are launched with either Android 14 6.1 or Android 15 6.6 .6 kernels. I'm not talking about the Android version, I'm talking about the kernels that are inside. In other words, the two most recent kernels. As I just showed on that previous slide, that means that the Android 14 6.1 kernel will be supported until 2029, and the Android 15 6.6 .6 kernel is supported till 2028. However, that's only for launch new devices. Devices that get an upgrade, so a device that was released last year or the year before that, and it's getting an OS upgrade, that can use any kernel from Android 14.19 stable. So that's actually uh, quite a few years back. In fact, if we go back to this previous slide, we can see that kernel was uh, launched in 2018 and uh, it's still being supported to 2025. So it can receive another OS upgrade, another platform upgrade, and the kernel can still remain there uh, the same. So there we go. So we're getting now from Google another four years of additional support. So there we have it. Good news from Google and then it's offering these four years of long-term support for the Linux kernels that get used inside of Android. Now, I'd love to hear from you. How important are security updates, announcements about security updates and promises by OEMs? Uh, how important are they when you make a purchasing decision? Do you say, well, this particular OEM only offers two years of support. This one's promising me five years. You know, this one's promising me see, seven years, whatever it is they're promising. Is that a factor? Or are things like price or the camera something that's more important to you? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well, stick around. Subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.